hear me? Yep, okay, thank you. So I'm gonna go through a very short uh, presentation that um, as uh, Council Member Weiner said, kind of gives you a brief history of the property and then shows what we're hoping to do. So this is a landfill that uh, Metro owned and opened in the uh, late 50s. And we operated, operated it um, as a uh, landfill for several years. In uh, 72, um, the st a state study showed the site unsuitable due to runoff issues and we closed the landfill. Um, several years later, a private individual bought the landfill and he operated it so the, when Metro owned the landfill, it was a municipal solid waste landfill. And when the other gentleman came along, he was operated as a construction and demolition landfill. Um, he sold the property. It's been uh, in several different hands over the years. It has been rezoned. Um, it was actually divided into two separate parcels um, quite some time ago. And it's now rezoned as uh, multifamily. So uh, TDEC um, noted in environmental concerns in 1999, and because Metro hadn't owned the landfill for so long, there's over the years been a lot of confusion as to who was responsible for it. The uh, individual who, um, and, and just so you all know, we have somebody who's way more knowledgeable about the history than I in this room, so if we have very specific questions, we're gonna be um, reaching out to, to you. Um, thank you, sir. Um, uh, but TDEC was, um, uh, as you go back and forth through, through the files, TDEC had reached out to Public Works a couple of times over the last couple of decades, but had decided we weren't responsible for it because it had belonged to other people, it had belonged to um, somebody else. Uh, but uh, uh, three years ago, TDEC reached out to us, the field office did, and said, we, we believe you're going to be responsible for it. There are some issues related to the landfill. There's some uh, runoff from the landfill. And at that time, the uh, bulk of the property had been sold to an individual who was hoping to develop it, which is actually how the field office found out um, and brought this to our attention that we needed to address it and that um, we weren't gonna be, or he wasn't gonna be able to develop it. So this picture shows the property site um, along Old Hickory Boulevard. I don't know if I can get a mouse here or not, but you can see Old Hickory Boulevard and um, the yellow space is the um, footprint of what was the bulk of the landfill, but that's one parcel owned by one person. And then the red is the bigger piece that uh, was divided off by a developer quite some time ago, hoping that that property was developable the uh, part of the property, the, that part of that red um, area to the, um, to your left, do you mind? yeah, is completely, um, I mean, you can't do anything on it. That's part of the property that uh, the letter from Council Member Weiner mentioned as being uh, green space. It's um, hilly and uh, it, it's not developable. Um, the other red area they were hoping to put something on, but as it turns out, the footprint of the landfill extends much beyond what they originally thought, and only the the um, area, and I really wish I had a, whoop, back here. I wish I could show you. Does this have a pointer on it? Ah, there we go. The area, well, it, it just won't here, go up there. Here comes Mr. Techie? Oh, okay. So, Will it not go red? That section is where there could potentially be a um, storage unit uh, business. So um, TDEC has given Metro a fair amount of time to, what we need to do is reclaim both properties. Um, and uh, we have communicated officially with the property owners. We have their permission to go out and be on the property. Uh, the Great Tennessee Land Company is the one that owns that big orange piece. And uh, Metro 
legal and public works and um, the property owner's attorney, uh, Mr. Tom White, have met with the council member on multiple occasions. Uh, they are planning to transfer the landfill. They're planning to, to divide the property again from what's the landfill to what they can actually use and they're going to transfer that property to Metro. Um, and I would assume that uh, w there's some planning pieces that are in, are they in the process now? That, that are in the process that will have to go through council. So we'll be here talking about this again um, as those um, uh, planning pieces come through council. And then after that, they're gonna uh, transfer the property to Metro and they'll be able to develop their part, at which point we'll start handling the landfill piece. And the smaller red area, which is actually the, the bulk of what was the landfill, is owned by a private individual and I've been in touch with him uh, to try and uh, reacquire that portion of the property. Right now, the property owners are uh, also potentially liable, which is one reason why they are interested in passing it off to the liability and the property off to Metro. So the goal for this property is, um, since you can't build residence on it, you can't build office buildings on it, is to uh, do two things. Number one would be to uh, repair the landfill which is gonna take a sizable amount of effort and then uh, put uh, pave it and put a um, convenience center on there like we have in East Nashville, Anders uh, Madison and in uh, Antioch. So that facility would have a household hazardous waste. You'd be able to take electronics, bulky items, household trash, recyclables, tires, brush, you know, small amounts of construction and demolition waste from people doing work at their homes. If you look at a map of Davidson County and you draw a line down the center, you'll see that our four convenience centers that we currently have are on the eastern half of the county. There's nothing out west. And uh, um, Council Member Weiner has been trying for uh, seven years and the councilman before her to try and find a location out there. Uh, this is the perfect opportunity for us to take a piece of unusable property and uh, make it a benefit to the community. Uh, Secondly, we're hoping to put a salt bin out there and our cost proposals include building a salt bin with the uh, closing of the West Public Works West Center. There is an assault bin out in West Nashville and our hope is to, um, to have that out there for when uh, you have inclement weather. Um, there is some plans, not, not part of the Public Works um, uh, budget numbers that you're gonna see. There can be trails out there. There's a fair amount of, most of this will remain green space, which is what's really good about it. And then of course, the uh, private development that can be on the other portion of the property. So this just kind of shows you now, these, these uh, yellow squares are where our convenience centers currently are. And then uh, the one out west with the little blue um, diamond beside it is the proposed. There's literally nothing in the western half of the county. And so this is gonna be a benefit to all the council districts that are out in this area from District 1 uh, to, uh, to all three of you um, council members here tonight uh, for your uh, residence. This uh, map shows kind of the layout, which I know is maybe a little difficult to see. Um, and it shows the developed, the, the orange portion is what might be developed for the storage units. And then the, I've got to put my glasses on because I'm half blind. Um, the, uh, okay, yeah, the pink section is where the salt bin would be and the green section is where the convenience center would be. But also as you see coming in there, because of where this is located, there will have to be some uh, improvements to the entrance, including a traffic light. It's right on a curve in the road. And for, you know, when our uh, consultants went out and looked at it, we just don't see an option other than, for, you know, for public safety and access to do that. So that's showing the future use. This shows the conceptual. It could look different, but this gives you a conceptual of what the convenience center could look like. You can see um, an entrance at the lower left and then immediately, if you were to drive in from the lower left, you'll see uh, recycling containers, uh, similar to drop-off sites on your right. And uh, as you drive around, uh, there will be places to put tires. In the upper right corner, you would be able to put um, brush and yard waste. The square in the upper 
left would be the household hazardous waste building and then all that in the middle would be containers up against a, a, a high wall where people can put bulky items in, trash, et cetera, for um, disposal. So the cost, if we were to do this today, is just about $7.1 and that includes the repairs to the landfill, stabilizing it, making sure there's no more runoff issues. We have some open waste, uh, some exposed waste out there. Constructing the convenience center with the household hazardous waste building, uh, putting in the salt bin and the roadway access with traffic light. Um, obviously, these numbers uh, change over time. So we had in the CIB a request for, I believe it was about 6.6 .6 million. Those numbers were about a year old. So we just recently updated them and we'll continue to do that. And I will also update the CIB with the new numbers. and. At this time, we're welcome for any questions. Before we do that, John, anybody back there, Tom, any of y'all want to opine and come up and offer any additional insight? Jason, anything I've Jason, missed? you have anything Claire? to add? Okay. 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 So the floor is open for questions. Councilman Rosenberg. Thank you. Thanks for this information. Um, just what changed between 1999 and 2015? I might have to defer to Jason on this. Jason Repture is with, actually was with the field office uh, at TDEC. He recently has left, but he is probably the most knowledgeable person on, uh, on this piece of property and um, uh, Jason. Yeah, so Dave, so we've met a couple of times, but the big issue came from is just the, the volume of leachate that was kind of emanating out of the fill area. In addition, what as Sharon said is what really got our idea, our, our kind of I guess our idea at the time when I was with TDEC is that the property got rezoned, it became multifamily, and all of a sudden we started seeing for sale signs and development signs saying that there were going to be single family homes put on top of the waste material, which can't happen. So that was kind of the big driver. And then once we started looking into it, we found more leachate, more issues downstream. So it's just been kind of a, a snowball effect. It's been on the radar to do something with, both on the TDEC side and even on the Metro side yeah. for years. It's just now with all the development possibilities, and it's one of the last large pieces of land in Bellevue that looks available to put, you know, either condos or multifamily use on, it became just, a, you know, time to, time to address it. Um, appreciate that. But also from the perspective, I guess in 1999, TDEC said we weren't liable for whatever issues were there. And then 2015, they said we were liable. Yeah, so that, that one has a little bit more history to it, so I'll, I'll make it fairly simple. A notice of violation was issued, but it was issued to the wrong party. So TDEC at that time issued a notice of violation to Metro, who did not own the property. And through legal action at that time, basically found out that they did not have the legal authority to actually write the letter to Metro. They should have written it to the landowner. So that when they pulled back to figure out whether or not they were going to write it, a new letter to the landowner, they figured out that they didn't have, at that time, basis for a regulatory stance against a landowner that purchased the property after the waste had been placed. And it pretty much went in limbo for five to six years while they went through that le those legal steps. And I believe part of the issue is that the, um, the problem stems from the material that Metro accepted, you know, years ago. Yeah, so the, way, the waste to the type of waste materials, at one point in time, this was actually promulgated as a Superfund site. It didn't rank high enough. There's a point system, so it didn't rank high enough. And so it kind of got depromulgated out of Superfund, went back into TDEC's solid waste program. And being that it's in a gray area between 1972 and 1990 when the new regulations kicked in, it is difficult for TDEC to fully regulate the facility. What they're regulating the facility now on is not the waste material that's in place, it's the discharge of the leachate going into the stream. So that's actually what they're regulating on now. Yeah. And it's just taking, you know, not just this site, but many others within the state. It took a while to get that regulatory framework in place to, to know which particular way they would actually come out. No, no new NOV has been issued to any of the parties here. Uh, so both of the current landowners and Metro at this point, there is no active violation letter out currently. It has just been simply a, a matter of, you know, this is the issue. We want the parties to come together to find a resolution. Obviously, the developer that would like to, you know, put something out there has found a way to make a little bit of money by putting the, you know, the uh, container storage out there. The, the other owner that bought it, I think, at a Metro tax auction, yeah. obviously didn't pay that much. 
uh, has only paid taxes since, and I'm sure there's, you know, it's a very small amount of money to address for, you know, getting them back out of their investment. Uh, and moving forward so they're not in the liability chain and it puts it all back into Metro's hands where there can be some sort of you know institutional control on the property going forward so we don't see houses on top of that. Thank you. Of course. Appreciate that. Um, and then just one other question. I, I know the issue is premature. The question might be premature too, but would there be adequate space on leftover for a future Police precinct, for example, that's developable? No, there's not. We've already looked. And okay. also, I don't think you would want to have a uh, enclosed building with people inside it um, because of the security. Well, and it's the, the yeah, gases. So, so it's the, yeah, so the, the, the off gassing of the materials were replaced back in the, in the 50s and 60s in there. That still can come through the large amount of shot rock that was taken off of the uh, hot when they, when they expanded Ultrica Boulevard. They simply took all the shot rock off the off the side and actually put it on top of the waste materials. So, not the best cover system. It's also pretty porous. So anything that vapors or anything else that comes through would get into that build the end of that building. So that's one of the reasons that TDEX involved is you know is trying not to have any permanent residency type activity, including you know some sort of. That'd be a pretty yeah. horrible idea. Okay. Yeah. Thank yeah. You. Great. I appreciate it. Thank Great you. Great question, though. Thank you, Council Eddie Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my question about uh, CIB portion is so currently about 7.1 million. So it includes all the uh, landfill stabilization and convenience center and so forth. Does it include a repurchase of the land? I understand uh, the currently land is owned by private entity. So let me go back. So when a metro let go of that property, there was a, was there some financial transaction? So private entity, did they purchase the land from the metro? So are we buying back that from the private entity? Yeah, so now the land is owned by two different people. And uh, at, at this point, the gentleman who owns the bulk of it, who's, he actually paid a, lot, a, a fair amount of money for it, he's going to gift it to metro. To, because this is a huge liability. Um, this is not something he wants to inherit and have to repair. Uh, so if there is any money exchanging, um, as Jason said, it should be extremely minimal and just for the second party. But the, I, I don't think there's gonna be any issue. We've had multiple meetings with the, the property owner from uh, the big chunk of it with Tom White and uh, Council Member Weiner and he has agreed to transfer it to Metro. And let me add, Council Lady, that um, when we put this into the CIB, the monies that you see allocated, that 7.1 million, would, did not include any property transaction at all. And it will be um, presented, once we get all of our rezoning done, it'll be presented to the capital spending plan this spring or whenever we do another capital spending plan, because you can do them any time. So, but uh, the bulk of the land, since uh, the land will be gifted to Metro, so that will be 7.1 is kind of a uh, ballpark. Yeah, the 7.1 is just for the, de the repair and development of the facility. I don't anticipate uh, there being any additional uh, costs. So as far as, uh, you know, violation uh, cited uh, by TDEC, it says runoff. So what kind of, you know, uh, mitigation are you planning to do? Especially, I think there's some creek nearby. So Does it include, you know, preventing the runoff to go into the creek? Absolutely. And so we did some very preliminary um, uh, study out there with our consultant once we have reacquired the property and the funding, then we're actually going to do, uh, obviously, a little more extensive. We're going to need to uh, divert runoff, maybe even through, um, have it go down through a sewer line so that it's not getting into, you know, the ground or the stream or anything. And uh, we're going to have to restabilize uh, the slope of the landfill. So that's as much as we kind of understand right now. There might be a little more or a little less once we get into it. But the big thing will be that we'll, we'll direct the runoff most likely into a, you know, some sort of a sewer line. And also, 
I think that, you know, how properly close the landfill is much more, you know, regulated these days. But by the time when Metro closed the landfill, I'm assuming the regulation was not, you know, stringent than yeah. current days. So are we able to kind of, you know, revisit those or just kind of stabilize and put the concrete and then it will be just safe enough. Yeah, but I think that once we, we repair the problems and um, I, I don't think there's gonna be any other issues with the landfill itself. There's just been a lot of, you know, there's been rock dumped on it. It's, it's kind of been almost like an abandoned uh, piece of property over the years, uh, but I don't anticipate it having any other issues. And if there were to be something that comes up, then Metro would own it. We'd be able to immediately address it and it wouldn't become, you know, some sort of big issue. Yeah, I'd be interested in because, you know, especially it was municipal, you know, waste landfill yeah. before C and D. So I would, you know, would like you to kind of investigate what's the proper enclosure and so forth. Yeah, so this landfill is what's called a pre-subtitle D landfill, which, um, were EPA regulations in the 90s that uh, changed how uh, landfills were supposed to be operated. And uh, this one preceded that, and there's a lot of these landfills. We actually have a bunch of old landfills like this um, all over Tennessee that um, probably like you and I wouldn't even know. Like when I drove down Old Hickory Boulevard, the first time looking for this property, I couldn't even figure out where it was. Yeah, I didn't even know there was a landfill <laughs> until I saw the map. It's like, wow, that's amazing. So, yeah, I, th I think overall, uh, you know, all the stabilization and mitigation is done. And I mean, we desperately need, you know, convenient center and so forth. So I think use will be good. So tell me about the traffic light one more time. I'm trying to uh, determine, do we have traffic light over there or do we need to install the new one? It will well, be a new one. It will be a new one, yeah. Because so right the, now, there really aren't many entries in that area. No, so, there aren't. Yeah. And it has actually become a speedway over there. And the notion that a truck or a car full of debris coming in or out right there with no traffic calming like a light um, to control it is just an accident waiting to happen. This will be a big benefit to the uh, to the area for sure. So I'm, I'm assuming, you know, the uh, entryway is off all the hickory, so the, will it be sharing with the private storage unit and then go north will be convenience center and then south uh, coming in left will be storage unit? So there will be, likely be a roadway coming in that anybody coming onto the, the property or properties would use. And we would build a road over to the convenience center. My understanding is that the storage unit would then need to build their driveway up to their unit, but uh, everybody will benefit from the traffic light. Okay, yeah, thank you. I think uh, that's it for now. I, I'm sure I, you know, as you develop, there'll be more questions, but I do appreciate it for the information. Thank you, Councilmember Rosenberg. Unless you're going to say something about me being the traffic light well, queen, forget well, it. Well, that is kind of a concern of mine. Is it true that Public Works is running out of traffic lights because Council Lady Wiener has put so many of them in throughout Bellevue? Well, um, as, as the trash person for Public Works, I truly have no idea about <laughs> that, but it sounds completely reasonable. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, that's, that's something we'll need to, to address. I'm going to turn your mic off now, both of you. <laughs> Anybody in the back have any more questions or comments? I've got the public tables open, so just feel free to go to the lectern. I have a question. Um, talking about these storage units that will be built up there, will those be managed by this, this entity, this person that has not yet sold the property to Metro, or who will be running those storage properties? I believe it'll be the property owner okay. and or his designee, and most probably his designee. And it's the same property owner that has it right now? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Go ahead, come on up. What is the total acreage of the property and how much acreage would be left over for green space then? Clay, do you know the answer to that? So um, the you can see on here sort of the, the parcels. There's a fair amount that will be green space, more than what is 
used by the convenience center, but I don't know if you if you do know the full acreage. It's probably what around 32 acres. 32 acres has has waste under it. Uh, the convenience center portion is probably about eight acres. Yeah, with, with the, the salt bin. With the salt bin yeah. and the storage. Yeah, the, 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 yeah. yeah, so most of it will remain as green space. That, that leads me to ask is, would there be some opportunity to, for a mini metro park there for hiking and some parking for that? Or I mean, I really think that's a possibility for metro parks to to explore. I think there could be trails and stuff like that. There's a lot of this is not super flat. We're putting the... Uh, convenience center on the flattest portion of the property so um, I don't know if it, there there would be space for much but I can easily imagine um, trails could be cut through there I actually did ask about that um, to find out if the property would be amenable to that just in terms of the topography you know the the landfill piece of it and the answer was yes and I have gone to parks and we've started having that conversation Oh, I can imagine it would be an extreme hiking trail it's with the <laughs> gradients think, they've got. I think it'd be a great uh, mountain it's biking area. Yes. Or Anybody have any other questions, comments? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Come on up. Follow-up question then on the park aspect of it. Is there any concern given that it's landfill, given, you know, whatever might be underneath that, I, I guess maybe the health aspect of it or... No, not really, because you're just out there, it's in the open, and there is a fair amount of rock on top of all that uh, trash, because as uh, was said earlier, when they widened, at least I believe this was said, when they widened Old Hickory Boulevard, all the rock that was blasted and everything was, was set over there, so I don't anticipate there would be any uh, problem. Jason, do you think there would be an issue from y'all's perspective, and because that was something we had discussed when we talked about the yeah. use? Right. as a park so, right so i was caveat the fact that i'm not with tdac anymore uh but no so the issue does, as, as sharon pointed out there's 1.2 million yards of shot rock on top with the waste material there's only a small 100 foot strip at the base near the stream that actually is, has exposed waste and that has always been part of the plan to have that covered uh with another, a sufficient you know system that there would be no human contact or anything else with the material that's also where the you know the leachate or the runoff is being collected to get into the sewer system. So those controls in place usually allow for park operations to happen, and it happens all over the state. So there's many, there's many landfills that have been turned into parks. Metro Center would be a good one. All the soccer fields down at, at Metro yeah. Center uh, are on top of on top of one of the landfills down there. Okay, good. All right, thank you. Well, if there are no more questions or comments, we will end our conversation and if you have any questions feel free please feel free to email or call and we'll move forward from there thank you this has been a service of the metro national network if you would like to see this presentation again or for more information about this and other programs, visit nashville.gov.